Hi everyone, Gil Freed here, the crowd management doctor. I hope everyone's doing well. This is another uh, case study that we're looking at and it's a case I actually worked on. This is Rodriguez versus Los Angeles Dodgers. This case entails a Los Angeles Dodgers fan who got involved in a dispute with security and another fan and it resulted in him getting into a fight, unfortunately. The game was an opening day game with the Dodgers. Mr. Rodriguez was enjoying the game when security came around and were questioning a person about smoking marijuana. Mr. Rodriguez got involved in the dispute. He didn't need to, but he got involved. He was trying to defend the other guests. Security did not take too kindly to him getting involved. They were ejecting the other fan and they started the ejection process for Mr. Rodriguez as well. Mr. Rodriguez asked several times, what was the reason for being ejected? Until that point, he allegedly had not used any profanity, but the security personnel for the Dodgers felt he was threatening. When they were walking towards the front gate, he kept asking for a reason. He kept asking, why am I being ejected? And the off-duty officers either said they would tell him later or they would just find out later. At the entrance or exit area, Mr. Rodriguez had his cup of beer taken away and pushed out the gate even though he was complaining that he had paid a lot of money for the tickets and that he did not know why he was being ejected. Outside the gate, a scuffle ensued with a highly agitated and somewhat intoxicated Mr. Rodriguez. The testimony is mixed as to what happened next. One officer indicated that Mr. Rodriguez took a swing at him and hit him in the chin. Mr. Rodriguez claimed he swung at the officer but he missed. The officer responded by punching Mr. Rodriguez several times in the torso. Mr. Rodriguez was then aggressively brought down to the ground. During that process, where several officers were involved in that process, Mr. Rodriguez hit his head against the uh, metal fence and was injured. He was bleeding. While Mr. Rodriguez was on the ground and being subdued, and then later on handcuffed, one of the officers put his knee on or so close to Mr. Rodriguez's neck that Mr. Rodriguez could not breathe. In a video reminiscent of the George Floyd incident, which happened a year after this incident, Mr. Rodriguez could be heard screaming, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. In several depositions for the police officers, there was testimony that no one put their knee on Mr. Rodriguez's neck and they did not hear him scream, I can't breathe. However, that was the testimony from Mr. Rodriguez and from other witnesses there, and then he had the video. At trial, the damning video was shown, and that must have swayed the jury. The Los Angeles Superior Court panel assessed $100,000 of Francisco Rodriguez's damages against the Dodgers and $5,000 against Dodgers security officer and police officer Eric Pina. The punitive damages phase of the trial was triggered when the jury, while deciding Mr. Rodriguez's compensatory damages, found that Pina acted with malice, fraud, or oppression. A judge awarded $105,000 in punitive damages. The panel awarded Rodriguez $131,780 in punitive damages, but the amount was impacted by an additional jury finding that Rodriguez was 75% liable for his injuries and the Dodgers were responsible for the remaining 25%. Jurors concluded that Pina was negligent, but not the Dodgers. This is just one of several cases either decided or pending against the Dodgers. Around 10 years ago, there was the famous Brian Stowe case where a San Francisco Giants fan was attacked in the Dodgers parking lot and suffered a traumatic brain injury when his head hit the pavement. A jury in that case awarded around $13 million at the time. A more recent case involved Daniel Antunes and the injuries he sustained at Dodger Stadium on April 24, 2018. In that case, Mr. Antunes stated that he went to a Dodgers game with friends to celebrate his birthday. Why not? Go to a game for your birthday. While at the game, one of Mr. Antunes' friends, Miss Vanessa Gonzalez, accidentally spilled a beer 
on a fan in front of her in the loge section. The fan spouse called security. Security escorted Mrs. Gonzalez to the loge con cor concourse, and Mr. Antunes accompanied everyone. At some point, Mr. Antunes told Dodger Stadium security, including Mr. Danny Choi, Mr. Armando Montavlo, and Mr. Carlos Mitre, that he had to use the bathroom about 15 feet away from where everyone was standing. Around this point, Dodger Stadium security told Ms. Gonzalez that she was going to be ejected from the stadium. As Mr. Antunes walked to the bathroom, the Dodger security officer grabbed Mr. Antunes. They tackled him, and that resulted in a broken ankle for him, and that required three surgeries. The Dodgers allege that the force was necessary because they claimed that when Mr. Mitri grabbed Mr. Antunes, Mr. Antunes punched Mr. Mitri and attempted to choke him. In many of these cases, there is a he said, she said kind of issue. But there is often video taken by bystanders or security monitoring cameras where the facts can easily be shown. That is if the footage is available and if it's not erased by the venue or somebody else. During the trial, Mr. Antunes' attorney reported that during the trial, the head of Dodger Stadium Security testified that the security division does not look into its own use of force. Multiple videos taken of the incident were shown, which support Mr. Antunes' account of events showing an overzealous response akin to detaining a criminal suspect rather than maintaining order at a baseball game. A Los Angeles jury agreed with Mr. Antunes. On February 29th, 2023, after a trial, a Los Angeles jury held the Dodgers liable in Mr. Antunes' personal injury lawsuit and awarded him $108,500 for his injuries. Per the minute order of the proceedings, $89,000 of the award was based on past economic damage, $75,000 in medical damages, and about $14,000 in lost wages. The jury awarded Mr. Antunes $12,000 in physical pain slash mental suffering, if you want to call it that, and $7,500 in future non-economic losses. Like the Rodriguez case that we mentioned at the start, in this case, the jury found Mr. Antunes was comparatively negligent in the amount of 35%, which would reduce the total award to around $70,000. Unlike the Rodriguez case, the jury did not award punitive damages to Mr. Antunes. Punitive damages are used to punish an offender rather than restore someone from the economic harm or physical harm they have suffered. These are only some of the cases against the Dodgers, and Mr. Antunes' attorney has around 15 other pending cases against the Dodgers. The Dodgers are not alone, as there are multiple security-related cases against most professional teams or venues. Alcohol has some impact on some cases. A bigger issue, in many cases, entails proper communication and uniformed enforcement of fan code of conduct and whether or not it's done across the board. The key question is what can frontline staff people do to avoid these possible legal challenges? The answer is relatively simple. One, don't be a jerk. Treat the various parties similar to how you would have liked to have been treated in a similar situation, i.e. the golden rule. Number two, listen to what the person is saying. If they are having a hard time explaining what is going on, you can ask for an interpreter. Ask them to gather their thoughts and talk slowly so you can understand and then ask them to repeat critical facts. Restate what they had just said to make sure you got it or utilize other communication tools to facilitate making sure they know what they said, you know what they said, and everyone's on the same page. Number three, it never hurts to call a supervisor if assistance is needed. If you feel it's getting out of hand, call a supervisor. Number four, never put your hands on a guest or a patron. Even if it is an honest gesture or an attempt to comfort someone, the action can be taken differently by different people. Be cautious. Number five, if there has been a violation of the code of conduct, be specific about what the code says and what the penalty can be for such a violation. 
Often someone might have violated the code in the past and had been warned. It is a good idea to indicate this and say something such as, if you remember, I talked with you earlier in the game and gave you a warning not to engage in swearing earlier in the game. Now that there has been a second violation, I am forced to ask you to leave. If you refuse to voluntarily leave, I will be forced to contact the police to escort you out of the stadium. Saying something like that can really break ground and uh, uh, hopefully prevent any future situations like that. Um, six, never take it personally. Some people are jerks or might act that way. Don't let them get into your head. You have a job to do and it is that job to make the venue as safe as possible. That's what you're there to do. Number seven, remember there will often be people looking for the gotcha moment and they might be filming what is going on. If you act professionally, they will not get any footage that will be valuable for them. Number eight, avoid putting your hands on anyone in an aggressive manner, which includes raising your hands if someone enters your space or becomes threatening. Ask them to step back and that they are encroaching into your personal space. The key takeaway from the Rodriguez case is that there is precedence to award punitive damages if security acts in such a horrible manner that the court wants to punish the security officer. To avoid this costly mistake, always act professionally and when needed, ask for assistance. Number nine, one of the facts that came out of the case was that the Dodgers did not do independent background checks on the sworn officers. It was assumed that if they are police officers, they should be fit for their job. However, there can be officers with multiple complaints against them and the venue should have the ability to tell the sworn officers provided that they do not want anyone with past issues because the law enforcement agency might be on notice, but not the venue. Thus, if you know someone who is hired and they have a problematic background, like a lot of complaints against them or something like that, contact HR as they might know what to do or they might be able to act upon that. Number 10, while venues might claim to have a zero tolerance policy, there are always degrees and frontline staff should use their best judgment to determine whether someone really is serious enough to warrant enforcing the fan code of conduct. Number 11, Officer Pina was on the first day of work for the Dodgers. The game was also the first home game of the season. This raises a concern whether people are ready for their first day on the job. It never hurts to ask if someone is ready and if someone is not ready. If they are not ready, they should feel comfortable saying so. There is an adage, fake it until you make it. This is not always the case when the safety and security of others are at play. Number 12, the Dodger security manual was very comprehensive and had some important points. These include, the customer is the most important visitor. We expect the experience to be safe and friendly. Never assume a defensive position. Workers need patience and empathy. Show genuine concern. Provide helpful information. Be considerate to others. When a guest has a question, we offer a solution and respond quickly with kindness and understanding. These are all great points. The key for any venue is not just to have it in a written form, but for all the staff to embrace and execute these high standards. If you do that, you're doing your job. So I wanted to end this with uh, thank you for listening to these cases. Uh, every venue is going to have issues and concerns. Every venue is going to have some issues such as fights that might occur and uh, problematic fans, but you also could have fans that haven't done anything wrong. So if you are on the front lines, have patience, talk to people, listen to people. If they're raising concerns, try to address those. Never become physical with fans. Never try to use force as a solution to solve a possible problem. If you are in harm's way, or if you think something might escalate, call your supervisor. Bring in somebody else, especially law enforcement or other people that can uh, be the second set of eyes, second set of ears, but also people that can help you hopefully resolve a situation. 
That's it for me. I hope you learned a lot from these cases. Take care and be safe, everyone. Bye-bye.